We're back. It's Monday. You know what day it is. We're starting the week out strong with leg day. I'm going to walk you through what I'm doing, how I move, why I choose the exercises I choose. Hopefully this helps y'all learn more about how to structure your leg days and gives you different ideas for different movements you can do for what your goals are. And of course, always remember, these workouts are tailored to me. Take what you need, dismiss what you don't, and build your program. All right, y'all. Oh, wait. What y'all said doing here? Let's go. I got my timer. What I do is, every blue moon, if it's such a moment of rush, I throw my plyos in. Just the one, stay in touch with my athletic background. It's good for keeping the muscle full and bubbly using fast stretch muscles without adding any weight. Most people can't do plyos, and most adults don't even jump anymore. So keeping that type of connection with that movement works really well for my body. Now I won't do too much plyo because it'll start blowing my legs up. More like my track days, which I had to run down. So it's fun to have a medium. It also gets your heart rate up. <laughs> As you can tell, mine right now, after almost a minute, is at 154. So it's close to my hit type heart rates. Which for me, high intensity is. 165 and up. So, now you see what I just finished. 175. I recover quickly, so that's how fast my heart rate is recovering. Every breath, drop that heart rate back down. That's the key to my style of training, too, is just maintaining your breathing pattern. Keep my rest over here. Now, when it comes to my leg extensions, I'm gonna keep adding the weight every set. I won't do less than 15 for the um, alternate lunges. Now the key thing too is like, I knew I was gonna alternate the lunges instead of doing one single leg. So I made sure to match that with the under unilateral movement I'm doing to make sure that each leg is in the same amount of rest. Depending on your body type and how quick you get a pump, you'll see everything go to where we want it to go pretty quickly. And my Evigen products also help with that. If you're taking EVP, that's gonna help pump the muscle up too. My amino chemicals that I take during my workout, along with my glutamine. So it's for recovery, hydration, muscle fullness, and so it helps you recover throughout the entire workout. 
Last set, best set. So each time, if you're wondering how far to take it up, I take mine up 10 pounds every set. Still focus on keeping the same amount of tension and the same pace. You also notice I do like a big, as a cleansing breath, so I can drop my heart rate before I start going. As you can see, bring it up. Ah. So, clean on the machine. Move it on to exercise number three. Oh. Ah. Pretty much what I do, since we have so many machines, I don't even know how many squat machines we have and how many leg press machines we have at this point. Every week I'm like, all right, what? Squat version have I not done recently? Which um, leg press have I done recently? Different things like that, just so I'm really utilizing the most out of the gym. So I haven't done this bad boy in a while. I love this one because it's really easy on the knees. Like you can get weight on there if you need it, um, but it's nice and smooth on the knees. So I always look for what's gonna keep um, adding to my longevity. It's gonna be making sure that things aren't hurting my joints as I go. So, about time to get going. Heart rate is dropped down. Went to 1.30, so that means I'm pretty much fully recovered and ready to rock and roll. So I need to go up a little bit on this machine. Once. So I do a little bit of wider step on this one because I've already done my leg extensions was more outside for me from Morris and Lateralis. When you do the plyo jump, it's more full leg than anything, but I lean forward so it kind of was more quad. This one, since it's already had so much blood in it, I could do a wider grip and still fit wider foot placement and still fill it on the outside. So I'm making sure we're touching each leg, whether it's a little bit of turnout, whatever's comfortable for your hips and comfortable for your knees. Play around those foot placements, but make sure you're kind of switching it up sometimes since you're utilizing the muscles you don't normally use and getting those stronger too. And then this one, I also go really full range of motion. Whenever my weight is really, really light, I do really low full range of motion. Um, one, because I'm flexible, one, my joints can handle it. But also back in the day, I didn't do full range of motion. I, I grew from doing like keeping the tension really on there so like if it was a squat i wouldn't go below 90 degrees like this one is comfortable to do that and i'm also not get my goals until gain to load the weight up on there so remember it's making something feel heavy versus actually adding the weight on there i can make it feel heavy by doing something i don't usually do which is full range and if i'm not on this machine all the time my body kind of resets so you're building that strength over and you don't need as much weight
live with hamstrings. I do. I'm only allowed to train ladies once a week. So I do three quad focus exercises, three hamstring focus exercises. And that's it for the week. Hang it up. And if you notice too, I never sit down. Like I may lean. Usually I don't even do that. But I was always taught when I first started learning lift. If you don't sit down, do seated work, none of that like that. I just stand up. Even if I'm not like moving like this, I'm just used to doing that. But even when I was lifting like super, super heavy, I would at least just stand and just stand there so that I'm up and ready to go and not getting too relaxed and too rested. So I'm not ready to fire and do the work. That's just me though. All right, last set, best set. And we're moving on to hammies. Give our quads a break. So I've never used this one, so that's when being in the gym a long time is really helpful because you can kind of figure how the machine works based on how the body works. Because sometimes the picture isn't always like super helpful, but whenever I use a new machine, I take that weight all the way down, figure it out first before I start jumping it. So for these, you want to kind of find how far back you want to be and make sure everything sits where you want it. Eh, that's pretty good. All right, let's see what my rest is like. All right, let's do it. You can see we have five in a row here, along with our hacksaw, so you can see all those down there. So I just pick one. It's like being a little kid in a candy store. So I chose this one for the day, because it's close to my hamstring machine, which I'm super excited. So this one's gonna be the hammy focus one, so that's why my feet are up so high. I do a slight turnout for sumo. Just I'm really getting into the abductors. Low glute for me, depending on how in tune you are with your feet you'll be able to activate even more hamstrings. So it just really depends on how in tune you are with your body, as most things. So we're gonna start lifting the weight on up. Now if I verify the weight is too light, I'm just gonna go ahead and bump it up a little bit. Now that I know I'm comfortable with the machine and how it works. So good thing to know on this machine, it's the high low doses. For those who don't know what that is, it's curving your low back mine is very severe. So I tuck my pelvis for hamstring stuff majority of the time. So that way it stays in my hamstrings and not my low, my low back. It automatically does it on a seated position. Good time so far. I have a client after this, so 
I always move pretty quickly and efficiently when I have clients. In general, yes, but if I didn't have a client, I could take my time a little bit more. But since I do, I gotta keep it moving. Hi, booty. How are you, mama? Excellent. Uh, girl, you better keep learning something to take that rest time. <laughs> Go ahead, look, she's trying to rest, y'all. Natasha's trying to rest. So I get in, set my feet, tuck my hips. And then for me, because I have so much hamstring, I have to move it out the way a little bit so I'm able to fill on my adductors some more. Now, hand placement on this is just prefer personal preference. Sometimes I have my hands in the middle so I can feel it. My leg and make sure it's get enough depth and it goes to my shoulders that way. So I think you can have them this way. It just depends on where you, where you want to place your hands. keeping your own rest time. <laughs> Pay attention to when you're keeping it. So some people would have waited till they got up, set their rest time and gone from there. But for me, as soon as the weight starts moving, lock it in place, set the rest because your rest has already started by that point. So the more strict you are with that, the stronger you'll be, the better your endurance, and the less time you're killing. Especially if you have a busy life and you gotta keep moving. All right, last set coming up. Then we got a hamstring finisher and then cardio. Cardio party. <laughs> stiff legs so I like this machine to just switch it up from doing machine or just doing dumbbells or doing barbell it's nice a good little stretch change it up same concept though so you notice all my workouts tend to be very very similar just different exercise movements but targeting the same thing same style all right check my last time first all right let's do it Set that one so well, I just get out of here and 
keep the blood going. Cause this one I did my feet turn out. That one was more straight. That one was also straight leg, so it hits it differently. And like this one, there's like so much blood in the glutes and the ham, so that's a good thing. So this will be the last round. Time for cardio, and it's been an hour. So you kind of get like a picture of the time frame and how I'm able to get in and out of the gym. You just gotta keep moving. Now, if your goal is to be building, you're probably gonna be in the gym a little bit longer, especially if you're doing straight sets and like minute and a half to three minutes in between sets, you're gonna be in the gym a little bit longer, which is fine. You don't have to rush out of the gym, but if you're at a certain point and you gotta keep moving or your excuse is I don't have enough time, there's always time. You just gotta make it. So y'all don't know, this is my husband. Hello, <laughs> so I do hit. Most people don't do hit year round. Um, I do. It works for me. Um, but I also do like, say it's a leg day. I'll do leg day hit. If it's an upper body day, shoulder day, I'll do upper body hit. Most people try to like switch off and do something else they didn't already work, but I kind of like to tap the muscle out because one, that's what I'm used to. We would go from a three hour track practice to go lift in the gym, doing squats and deadlifts and everything else. So I'm used to killing the muscle and then um, killing it some more. So my quads are already fully recovered by this point and it's time to get to it. I'll talk to y'all then. Now when y'all are doing hit or cardio, what y'all be listening to? Tell me down in the comments. First round, heart rate's already 177. So I try to keep it there for the whole 20. Easier. And if they should, but they shouldn't. Because you should be pushing yourself harder. So for instance, my swim bike, my assault bike, rather, it got much easier as I got better shape, stronger and stronger with the motion and stayed doing the motion. But now it feels like I just started again because again, I made sure to tell my body, hey, we need to level up. So you're able to tell how much you leveled up by the RPMs you're going every time, how high your heart rate stays, and how much you're able to do as you keep going. 
so that's why I say level up. So yeah, yeah, it got easier, but it got harder in the sense that I'm pushing more than I ever was before. So that's super important when it comes to your hit is like always keep pushing yourself even when it gets easier. If it gets too easy, drop the rest time. But if it gets too easy, up your intensity. So it should never really be easy. We're gonna take it down a notch. We're gonna go down to Chris Brownsy. workouts I just do a circuit pretty much whatever I feel like doing for that day uh, focusing on just keeping the contraction keeping some blood in the abs um, the good thing the key thing is too for like for me because I have um, very functional abs since I did sports my entire life that's helpful when it comes to any type of season especially improvement season you're always going to see abs on me generally um, because they're so much thicker like not outward outwards but more to the front, so it has more push to the front, so it pushes through the skin, so any fat I gain, you're still gonna be able to see pop. Um, so that means if I don't see pop, that means I've really gone a little too far left um, for my abs. But I pretty much choose the things that are most comfortable on my spine and the ones that I feel the most um, in the right places, like where I wanna feel them. So you'll never see me do any side bendy stuff or any type of oblique work that's just not gonna be um, for me and really shouldn't be for anybody in the women's categories, I would say. All right, round two. Just like that. We're all done. All right, y'all have asked and y'all have received leg day. So you see kind of how my process goes through. It's the same thing every single Monday year round, only thing I do is switch around the exercises. So like, share, subscribe, comment below, whatever you want to see next, and we'll get that going. Now I am going to switch over into showing more of like my newbie workouts or more so how-to videos. So if you have specific exercises you have questions on, if you're new and you're getting to the gym just starting out in 2024 and you're like, all right, what should I do for arms? Like, how do I do this move moment? How do I do these machines? That's gonna be more so what I'm gonna start transitioning into. Now that we've kind of seen how I train, I wanna show y'all how you can get started and get my newbies and get more people into fitness. So that's my goal here and with my channel, give y'all a little insight, but also help those who need it. All right, again, like, share, subscribe below, and we'll see y'all soon.